This will be for your lab data. For this lab, you will need to write up a formal lab report with all of your um, processes, your directions, and all of that. Once you get your data, it should look something like this. And so I'm going to guide you through the analysis so you can cal calculate your percent errors. You'll actually have two percent error calculations, and I'll show you what, what I mean by that. But first, I want to show you how to do your graphs and how to go from there. And so for this, you should have your data roughly like this, where you have your focal length, and you have your distance to the object, and you have your distance to the image. You'll want to select both these columns, and you'll want to insert a scatter plot. The scatter plot, use the basic scatter, and it should pop up, and it should look something like this with that curve. Get rid of that label off to the right so you can expand it. And from here, you'll want to change the format of the graph uh, so that you can have your axis labels. and. Uh, you don't, don't choose this one. You'll want to choose uh, this one. You don't need the formula in this case. You can just delete it and expand it. Now you have your all of your titles and you can go from there. Now we want to modify our data because you'll notice that it's not a straight line for the other one. So you'll first want to copy your data, paste it down, and once you do that you want to move your DI column, your distance to the image, two columns to the right. And once you do that, in the next column over, uh, between, you'll label one inverse distance to the object, or inverse DO. And the next one, you want to label inverse DI. And just like the labels say, you want to do the inverse. So equals 1 divided by the, uh, the cell that you want to do the inverse of. Press Enter. And once you do that, you can just drag the formula down and fill it out. And for the inverse DI, you want to do the inverse of your distance to the image. So select the cell, do the same type of formula, press Enter, and then drag it down. Now what we want to do is we want to graph our DO versus DI. So select those two columns, insert another scatter plot, the same type of scatter, and you should see that it looks like a very nice line at this point, or at least it should if you took good data. You want to select this one so you can get your formula and your axis titles and you should notice that you have a very nice slope and in this case we want to make sure that we have a y-intercept because you'll notice that it does not go to the zero okay and so now I want to show you what we do from there and so you'll notice that I did the inverse do and inverse di and if you think of the mirror equation it should make you think back to that. So 1 over f is equal to 1 over do plus 1 over di. And what we want to do here is we want to match this equation now to our graph. And so you'll notice that we had these on our x and y axes. And so from here, what I want to do is I want to subtract my d 1 over di to the other side and subtract my 1 over f excuse me, my 1 over f from that side as well. And so it'll switch around like this. It'll look like this. One, negative 1 over di is equal to 1 over do minus 1 over f. Now I'm going to modify this just a little bit to make it a little bit, um, to make it match our, our graph a little bit better. And I'm going to multiply the entire thing by negative 1, so it makes this positive. So 1 over di is equal to negative 1 over do plus 1 over f. And what you should notice now is we have 1 over di on our y, and we have 1 over do on our x, which means that we should have a slope of negative 1. So it's negative 1 times 1 over do, and our y-intercept should be 1 over the focal length. So you, you are going to have two different percent errors. So you're going to have percent error for your slope. That'll be comparing the negative 1 to whatever value you got. And you'll do the percent error for the focal length. And so you'll take the inverse of the y-intercept. So the inverse of the y-intercept, and that should be equal to your focal length, you'll do another percent error calculation with that with your focal length. And that'll give you your 2% your errors uh, for your sample calculations.